Hi, I'm Chris and this is Hazel and uh, we're here to tell you all about the Discovering Orchids project, which is a major uh, citizen science project that the Natural History Society of Northumbria are running in the summer of 2022. The best place to tell you about it is to show you the video that we made uh, during the winter uh, with, the, with the outline of what we're going to do. Good idea. Coffee's up. Oh, lovely. Oh, thank you. And I might even be biscuits if they're lucky. <laughs> <laughs> so, Chris, what's about an organ project? Yes, uh, in 2022, the Natural History Society of Northumbria are going to run a major citizen science project on orchids. Had a big success with bees and ladybirds this year, so next year we thought it'd have to be botany, and we're concentrating on orchids. And in fact, the project is called Discovering Orchids. It's a bit melodramatic, isn't it? Well, they want to get people interested. Don't people like orchids, though? The lovely ones you get from the forests. Ah, but they're not native. They're grown in greenhouses or in garden centres. We should be concentrating on our native orchids, which, although they're not as showy as the ones you buy in supermarkets, are nonetheless absolutely fascinating uh, once you can get down to the detail. They're still beautiful, right? In their own right, yes, but some are quite small, some are really tiny, and you have to get down on your hands and knees and use your hand lens to fully appreciate them. So Chris, how many orchids do we have in Northumbria then? Well, about 22. What do you mean about? Well, orchids are a bit unreliable. You see, they have, um, they have tubers underground, swollen roots, which store nutrients, um, but they also have um, fungal threads that go through the soil and absorb nutrients and pass those back to the, the roots. And if they're having a good year, and there are lots of nutrients, then they will put up some leaves. And if they're having a really good year, uh, and there's bags of nutrients, then they'll flower. But if it's not a good year, nutrients are a bit scarce, fungal threads are not working properly, then they'll just sit there and wait, and wait until the time is right. So some years there will be lots, some years there will be none at all. So how many individuals have we got in Northumbria? Don't know. Don't the botanical records tell you? Well, not exactly. Not exactly? Exactly. Not exactly. What do you mean by that? Well, often the records we have only show us that the plant is within, say, a two by two kilometre square, so four square kilometres. And if they're old records, very often we only have it down to ten kilometre by ten kilometres, so very inaccurate indeed. So it could be anywhere in four square kilometres, or even a hundred? Yeah, and the records rarely give a quantity, so it could be one plant, or it could be thousands. That's not much help. How can you tell if the population is doing well or declining? Basically, you can't. The records are just not precise enough. This is pretty pathetic. They might be dying off around us, and until the last one dies out, we, we don't know. What can we do about it? Ah, well, that's the aim of this orchid project. We're asking people to go out, 
look for orchids, record the eight-figure grid reference where they find them, and provide an estimate of roughly how many there are. An eight-figure grid reference? Well, it tells you the position of the plant to within 10 metres. Now, I mean, you could use a, a GPS system if you've got one. Most people don't have GPS, but um, you can get a free app on your mobile phone, which will give you the a grid reference to that accuracy, or you could do what three words, another free app, and we're encouraging people to use iRecord, uh, and that's a fantastic system, which again is free, uh, and will provide the grid reference automatically, and also allows you to add photographs, um, so it's a really, really good system, we're encouraging people to use that. So what you're asking is for any, any interested member of the public to send records into their NHSF? Absolutely. Uh, iRecord sends the records to us automatically and then we can respond within a few days to tell the person, the recorder, that they've got it right or asking for other information. But you can go on the website, all those other ways are described there. You could just send us a spreadsheet or even just, just a straightforward email will do. So how will people recognise an orchid? There will be pictures and videos online. Um, as I said, you can send a, a photograph. Uh, we have a team of verifiers who will be able to look at your photographs and say, yes, that's, uh, that's uh, an accurate determination. And we shall also be producing a pamphlet, which you can look at, which will have pictures of the orchids and descriptions of them as well. So this is any orchid? Well, we do have detailed coordinates for most of the rare and scarce species in our area, so we're asking people to concentrate on the more widespread plants that people are more likely to find. But, of course, if you see one of the rarer ones, do take a note, note the grid reference, because it's always possible that you've found a new location for what is a rare plant, or you might even have found uh, an orchid which has not been recorded in our area before. I mean, that would be a real feather in your cap. So which ones in particular are you concentrating on? Ah, well, um, we've chosen seven. And um, the first one to flower in the year is the early purple orchid. And uh, so that flowers in May. Uh, it's quite a bonny plant. It's maybe a foot high. In our area, it's, uh, it's not uncommon. Immediately after that um, is the northern marsh orchid uh, in terms of time. And as you can see, that's a very dark purple colour. The lip, the lower lip, has um, stripes and spots on it. Um, and the leaves are spotted too, rather like the um, common spotted orchid, which is our next uh, orchid that flowers. Uh, and that's um, a, a lighter colour, usually light lilac, sometimes almost white, with much narrower spotted leaves. And then uh, the heath spotted orchid, which, uh, as its name implies, grows on the, in heathy areas, often in damp marshy spots. And that is, a, a, again, a light lilac colour with quite wide spots. Uh, lower lip. Quite a, a, a pretty plant, quite dainty. Um, pyramidal orchid is, is uh, another one which we want you to look out for, and that is a, a dark cerise colour. Uh, cerise pink really stands out against the grass, and as the name implies, it's often got a, a rather pyramidal shape. And then one that you might not have seen before, which is the uh, broad leaved Helleborina. Now, that grows in woodlands, and so it often gets missed, it's often in the shade, you may have to search for it a bit, but it's actually quite a common orchid, and it's the last one of the series to flower. Normally it flowers in perhaps late August or maybe early September. And then we've asked also for you to look for one of our rarer orchids, number seven, and we've chosen that uh, as the bee orchid. And that's because the, the bee orchid is on the march, it's climate change we think, and it's been expanding its range northwards. It got into, as far as North Northumberland, about 2004-2005, now it's got into Lowland Scotland, it's expanding in Northumberland and Durham, and we'd really like to know how far it's moving and where it's expanding to. So we've added, as number seven, the bee orchid. Um, so what will happen to all these new records? 
Well, initially they will go on to uh, the local record center, in our case ERIC, and from there to a national database, which will allow scientists anywhere, anywhere in the world to use them as part of their studies. And the Natural History Society will be producing a book, Orchids of the Northeast, or a similar title, which will contain maps and all the data and allow um, analysis to take place, and also will provide a picture uh, of the way orchids are behaving now and allow comparisons in the future. So you want people to go on walks in the area and note down where they see which orchids and how many? Yep. Well that sounds easy enough. Is that all? Yes, well we should be running a lot of site visits so that people can go and see the rarer orchids because we know they'll want to, to see them uh, and many of the sites in which they grow are, are fragile and so we need to take great care. Uh, also, we should be running workshops, um, hopefully with visiting experts, looking at some of the more complicated identification features, maybe at hybrid orchids and so forth, and we should be running some trips which will allow for wheelchair access. So how would we get involved in the project? Well, there will be information on the Natural History Society website, uh, dates and details, help with identification, uh, and there will also be details on how to take uh, photographs of orchids uh, to, to help with that identification. And what happens if you're not a member of the NHSM? doesn't matter. We'd like everybody to be involved, even if they're not members. All the workshops, all the trips will be open to members and non-members. We want to encourage as many people as possible to take part. That sounds great. Could I have a little biscuit now? You're free. <laughs>
uh, if you're looking at roughly speaking a, a, a 10 by 10 meter square so if you're standing next to an orchid and you look around you from roughly a 10 meter square and see how many there are maybe about 10 or perhaps about 50 or maybe about 100 that's all fine but you don't need to count every individual one just give it some a uh, pretty good guide will do and uh, if it's a big batch and you've got the time uh, you may like to then move around and um, give us another grid reference and another estimate of, of how many there are. The more information we have, particularly about some of these big patches of orchids, uh, the better it will be. And um, if you're at home uh, and uh, you know obviously where you've seen the orchids, you can pick it up on the map on the right, you can blow that map up to very, very large size and eventually it becomes a um, uh, an aerial photograph and you can pinpoint as accurately as you can please where you saw the orchid and that will then be put into the, um, uh, the, the list on the left. And those records will come back automatically to the Natural History Society and we have set up uh, a number of people called verifiers and they are folks who are used to identifying orchids um, and uh, they will be able to look at the photograph which you've taken, hopefully added to the, uh, the record, and uh, verify that it's, it's correct. And I'm sure they will all be correct, but it's good to, to check. And it may be uh, that um, uh, there will be some questions. Who knows? But the verification process should only take a few days. Um, sometimes with a bit of luck, you'll get an answer back the following day and you'll get an email back uh, to say uh, the result of the verification process. As I say, in, in odd occasions, it might be that we might go and take another photograph, perhaps, or something else, or go and look at the surrounding area. Um, of course, you don't have to do that. Um, uh, it, um, it's entirely up to you. So you can see there is a good system for putting your records in actually on the computer. Um, but if you can, uh, and you're, you've got a good mobile phone, a smartphone, um, you can download the iReport app and then you can get the uh, pages I've just been showing you on your uh, phone and that's a really great way of doing it because you take the photograph on your phone, uh, it automatically attaches to the record and it automatically gives you the grid reference too. So all you've got to do is put in the identification and the quantity of plants you're looking at and that will come straight to us um, even if you haven't got a signal, the phone will download it uh, to, uh, to our system as soon as it's, uh, it's able to get in, in touch. So that's a really a valuable way of doing it, um, but we appreciate not everybody is enthusiastic about iPhones. And uh, uh, if you haven't got a smartphone, you don't want to use it, please do use the iRecord app uh, on the, um, the Society's web pages. And if you don't fancy that either, well, you can email your sightings. It says there, um, share any sighting by email coming soon. Well, hopefully, I'm recording this a bit in advance, and hopefully by the time you get to do this, um, it will be there. Uh, you can click on the button and there will be a, a form which you can send in to uh, send in your sightings of uh, the seven orchids that we'd particularly like you to look out for, and indeed any other orchid. You're not restricted to the seven. Uh, which uh, we've picked up, which I mentioned in the film, we would love to have absolutely any sightings of any orchids which you can find. The more data we have, the better it will be. And one of the reasons for that uh, is that we are going to share the data with the uh, Environmental Records Centre from the North East, Eric. Um, they're going to be managing the data for us. And uh, that data will in due course um, feed into national systems, it will be on the National Biological Network, um, it will go to the Botanical Society of Britain and Ireland, and of course, through ERIC, it could be used um, to influence uh, planning decisions and so forth. So it's, it's very important that we have the, the maximum amount of information about these plants that we can possibly get uh, in order to protect them, to protect the environment and understand more about uh, how they're distributed around uh, our area. And of course, once the records are on these national systems, they are available to scientists anywhere in the world, from South America uh, 
to Northern Scandinavia and across to Canada, anybody, any scientist anywhere can use this data uh, when uh, they are analyzing plant distributions and so forth. And finally, we're going to publish a book. Now, this is the Natural History Society's Bumblebee book, as you can see, and it's going to be a bit like this. We hope it'll come out in the autumn or winter of this year, 2022, once we've finished all the surveying, and it will contain all the records uh, that we have been able to, uh, to make. So watch out for that at the back end of this year. Now, when we made the video, um, we didn't have uh, all the trips uh, to see orchids that we wanted to organise. We didn't have all those done. And so uh, we now have an enormous list of trips which you can go on to see uh, our native orchids. Have you got a list of those we can see? Yes, uh, we've got a list and some pictures. Can you switch that? We've, we've uh, arranged a whole range of different trips uh, throughout the Northeast uh, to show you different, different orchids. But obviously, if we're in some nice juicy reserve, we're going to look at whatever's there. Some of the trips are designed so that you can see and become familiar with some of the, the orchids that you're looking out for yourself. For example, in, uh, in May, we're going to see uh, early purples in Walkworth so that you can become familiar with them. And uh, later, we're going to go to uh, Felton uh, to see the uh, uh, broad-leaved helleborines. Uh, again, to help you to help you recognise those. Sometimes we're going to see special plants that it's hard to see anywhere else. And we are, for example, going to Holy Island several times um, because everything isn't on in flower at the same time. So we will at different times be seeing um, different things. But for example, the frog orchids. Uh, we don't see until August, whereas earlier than that, we can go to see the Lindisfarne helleborine and various other uh, orchids as well, we hope. Um, one of the orchids that, uh, that I didn't even knew grew in the Northeast until recently um, is a, a very rare thing to find. So we're going to south of uh, County Durham to, uh, to see if we can find the burnt tip orchid, which will be a rather special thing to see. Some are rare and some are very hard to find, some are both. And a trip in, in uh, June, uh, sorry, a trip in August, uh, hopes to cover both of those. This is a bog orchid and uh, a picture of a, a lesser tway blade. They're both tiny and easy to miss so having somebody there to point them out to you is, is uh, very useful. In all these trips we have uh, local leaders uh, who are, have offered to, to help uh, to, to show you the, the, the special plants in their areas. Uh, in East Chevington we're hoping to see the um, lesser butterfly or orchid. Again, it's a, a place where you don't normally get public access. So we have to arrange that specially for, uh, for the, the trip. And the same in, in Dipton Mill, we'll have to get permission to get onto the particular part of land, which has got the greater butterfly orchid so that uh, you can compare the pair. The green flowered helleborine uh, is again on private land, uh, so it's very um, unusual to be allowed to, to go in and have a look at that. On the other hand, Bishop Middleham is well known um, as a, a site for many glorious orchids. Uh, we'll be there to see the dark red helleborines and various others. The Raisby. Um, reserve has a similar array and we'll be going to that in uh, one of the trips as well to see uh, a, a different range of orchids at different time of year. 
the in Wylam, uh, there are the dune helleborines, and then we're going to, we couldn't ignore Teasdale, uh, which again has its own range of, of uh, beautiful uh, orchids, uh, particularly looking at the fragrant orchids up there. Um, there might be other visits, we uh, are still looking at them, and the, the dates have to be a little bit plastic because Sometimes the orchids just aren't behaving themselves and don't flower at the same time each year. We we're going to do some different sorts of trips as well, looking at recording uh, the populations of some of these rarer orchids, uh, usually to places where um, we don't want a lot of people trampling. So we just want a few people of uh, specialized uh, botanists who would be able to help us to look around. For example, we're hoping to look in Newham Fen. Uh, it had coral roots recorded for over a hundred years, but not seen since 1994. So we'd like to um, do a survey in the area to see if there's any that have, have uh, su still survived there. And another example would be Dipton Wood where there is creeping ladies' tresses. And again, it would be uh, good to monitor uh, how the population is doing at the moment to be able to see how it, how it changes over, over the decades. That's amazing. That's a, a real chance, isn't it, to see an awful lot of some really quite rare orchids. But what I'd like to do now is take the focus back to the seven orchid species we mentioned in the film and look at those in a bit more detail because those are the ones which we want people really to go out and search for. The other ones are a bonus, but um, here are the seven orchids that are the focus of the project. The first one to come into flower in late April, early May, uh, is uh, Orchis mascula, the early purple orchid. And Hazel's already mentioned that we've organized a special trip to Walkworth um, during that period of time to see them, uh, but they do occur quite widely around the uh, two counties. Uh, they're quite easily recognisable, I mean, first of all, because they're very early and there are really no other orchids out at, uh, at uh, that particular time in late April. They have broad spotted leaves uh, and a shallowly divided uh, lower lip and these rather pretty purple flowers. And in close up, uh, you can see that the um, the flowers uh, are this cerise colour uh, with a white centre with dark purple spots on them. And that's very, very typical. Um, normally you'll see that on almost all the flowers. And there too is a picture of the, the leaf rosette, the um, quite wide leaves with dark spots. If we look at where you might find it, uh, on the right is the map for um, England, Scotland, Ireland, and Wales showing where the plants are found. And you can see up in the northeast here uh, that it looks really rather common. It looks as though it's pretty solidly distributed around our area. But if you look at the left hand map, which is um, uh, plotted at two by two kilometer uh, resolution, so that's four square kilometers for every dot, you can see it's in fact much more scattered than it would appear from the map. And we very much hope that when you can tell us much more accurately where these orchids are found, that we should be able to produce a much more accurate map than the one on the left. You can see that there's quite a lot of it down in County Durham, so if you're down there, um, you're quite much more likely to see it than you are, say, up in North Northumberland, where the populations are much smaller. But that doesn't mean to say that you shouldn't go looking, because it may well be that there are populations in all of these blank areas which nobody's yet found. Uh, we're going to move on now to the next orchid in time, and that's Dactylorhiza fuchsii, common spotted orchid. And I'm going to go back. Uh, that flowers in June and July. As its name implies, um, it's uh, possibly our most common orchid. Uh, it has very narrow spotted leaves, again, a deeply divided lower lip. Um, have a look at that more detail in a moment and the flowers are very very variable it can be quite dark through the lilac and sometimes almost white 
flowers. They say it's a very variable plant. Um, here's a, a close up of the flowers. And if you look at the lower lip, you can see that they normally have a very sharply pointed and um, very widely delineated tooth in the center. And the leaves spotted again, like the uh, early purple orchid, but this time much narrower, um, maybe only a, a centimeter or a centimeter and a half wide. But if we look at the distribution, I said it was much, much our commonest orchid, and it's very widespread all over the UK and Ireland. In the north of Scotland, it's not quite so common. And if you look at the map on the left, you can see that actually it's quite widespread in our area too. So it's much the most likely orchid that you're going to find. So do go and look for it um, wherever you are in the three, in the two counties. Uh, and um, report your for findings in because we'd like to fill in some of those blank spaces and we'd like to know uh, where the orchid has uh, been found before that it's still there it would be very valuable to know. Well, almost at the same time uh, is uh, the northern marsh orchid that Tularisa purpurella and you can see immediately um, that the flowers are much darker than the common spotted orchid um, it has much broader leaves, they are sometimes spotted, um, but the flower shape is, is really quite different. Um, it's a much broader flower uh, and um, uh, the, the lower lip can be um, really quite uh, almost diamond shaped in some cases, as you can see with the photograph on the right. If you look at its distribution, once again, northern marsh orchid, you would expect it to be common in the north, and you can see from the British map that it is. And again, it's quite widely spread over um, Northumberland and Durham. Uh, in Durham, it's, it's uh, let's say, quite widely spread over the whole of the county, whereas in the north of Northumberland, on the whole, it's rather coastal. Um, perhaps we don't have the right habitats for it um, in, the, uh, in the other areas. But again, of course, you may find it uh, anywhere. Um, this is a plant which we uh, really wanted to uh, to make sure we got to see uh, the bee orchid. Now I don't have to um, hardly describe this at all. It's absolutely unmistakable plant. Um, it's much lighter green than the other ones. That flowers in June. And as you can see, it's called bee orchid because uh, it's supposed that the, um, the shape of the flower imitates a bee. The bee, um, uh, bees will come and uh, believe that they're going to mate with a, another one of their own species. And in fact, it turns out to be uh, an orchid flower. I have to tell you, unfortunately, for bee orchids in the UK, the relevant bee doesn't live in the UK. They've spread up from southern Europe, uh, and so they're all um, self-pollinated in the UK. Um, bit of a shame, really, but never mind. And as a result, we think of climate change. They are continuing to move north. Um, there's a close-up of the, of the flower, and you can see the quite light green stem with a few leaves at the bottom, and these the clasping leaves going up the stem. Uh, and as I say, we believe it's moving north. Um, there's the map in, of, of England, and you can see it's creeping up the east coast um, and it getting into Scotland. It's got up to, uh, uh, to Edinburgh and uh, north into, uh, into Lowland Scotland. And uh, the first records from, uh, from my uh, vice county up in North Northumberland, and dots on the map here, uh, are uh, from the uh, uh, early 2000s, uh, it, so it's spreading. And we would dearly like to know where it's spreading to. Uh, it's now been found on Holy Island. It's not far from Holy Island yet, but it, it is there. Um, <clears throat> we found uh, a new population there last year. Somebody else had found, previously found some. So it's on the march. And we really like to know, as I say, where it's marching to. It's really valuable to know. <clears throat> and um, and then Hazel also mentioned the broadleaf helleborina. If you get the chance to come to visit uh, the plant in Felton, it's the largest population, I think, of broadleaf helleborinas I've ever seen. There are hundreds and hundreds of them at Felton, the Felton site. It's a late flower, flowers in August and September, very characteristic flowers. As you can see, um, it's got a sort of cup at the bottom lip. You can just see the dark center of the cup here. Uh, very broad leaves at the base, spiraling up the stem, um, and it's a, a woodland plant. 
Uh, here it is again, you can see the very broad leaves that give, give it its name and the flower here with a cup shaped uh, lower lip. Uh, colors are quite variable, uh, green, greeny pink, often, often things with pink, but not always. Um, but it's, it's a characteristic plant of, of, uh, of woodland and it's our commonest Hellebarina. Uh, you can see from the map it, over England and Ireland as a whole, it's, it's fairly common and it's not, uh, not rare in our area either. Um, but like many of these orchids, uh, they tend to peter out the further north you go. So um, more in County Durham than there are in the north of Thumbly. And Once again, there are some huge white spaces. Uh, as you can see, if I was a betting man, um, I would suggest that some of the woods in these white areas have probably got um, uh, broadly hellebarinus growing in them, which we just haven't yet found. And another orchid on the list, <coughs> this is pyramidal orchid, absolutely unmistakable, it's a bright cerise colour, it's really in your face orchid. Uh, flowers in June and July, um, and although the one picture is not particularly pyramidal, very often the flowers do form a pyramid shape, particularly early in the year when they're not all quite out. And uh, the close up of the flowers, are very neat flowers, they look almost as though they've been trimmed off with a pair of scissors. And the previous slide mentioned the spur, that's the um, appendage behind the flower. And if you look at the spur, you'll see it's very, very long, very characteristic. Um, try not to pull the flowers off, but if you poke about behind, you'll be able uh, to see the spur quite clearly. Um, again, it's not uncommon uh, in the north, it's almost entirely coastal, dust stretch in Landon County, Durham. Um, and there are very few records, modern records, uh, in um, mid and south Northumberland. And it would be fascinating to know what's happening to the plant in those areas. You can see in North Northumberland, up here, it's almost entirely concentrated on the coast, but there are very few records in South Northumberland, a few more in County Durham. So you can spot it in uh, Northumberland, it will be uh, really good. And then, not to be missed, the heath spotted orchid. This I think is a very pretty plant. You do need to take some care because it does grow on wet heaths and uh, where it grows, you'll like to get your feet wet if it's uh, in particularly uh, damp season and the bogs are, um, uh, are wet. Um, these rather lovely lilac flowers with swirls of um, lines and dots. You can see that the lower lip is very broad with a little tooth in the middle. Remember that the common spotted orchid had a very large tooth. And like many of these orchids, it has spotted leaves. And we can see that here. Again, the very broad tooth, uh, sorry, very broad lip and with a small tooth in the center and often very heavily spotted leaves. Well, always quite as heavily spotted as that. Um, but um, they, uh, they usually do have um, spotted leaves. And of course, that to the rise of maculata. Maculata means spotted in Latin, hence its name. Heresitorum means heath, of heath, scribe on heath. Um, it's not uh, uh, particularly rare. You can see that it's uh, uh, quite widely spread over the UK and um, unusually for, um, for our, uh, our orchid species, there's be more of it in Northumberland than there are uh, is in County Durham. Um, there are quite, uh, quite big gaps down here in County Durham. It spreads up around the, uh, the, the west side of, of Northumberland, damp and heathy areas, and up onto the moorlands of uh, Northumberland. And um, again, it's a plant uh, uh, about which we don't know a great deal. Um, it tends to, uh, to, to to live on heathlands, which are often rather unvisited areas. And so it'd be very interesting to know uh, more about uh, the sites in which it lives. So those are the seven orchids, which we would especially like you to go and watch out for and to record in one of the ways that uh, we previously described. If you haven't been taking notes as we've gone along, I'm not at all surprised, but don't worry. Uh, there is all the information on the website. So please look at that and, and see what you can join in with. That would be great. Yes, and we look, really look forward to receiving all your orchid records this summer. And there are bound to be new discoveries. There are bound to be populations of orchids we didn't know about. And there may even be orchids that we didn't know about.
Good luck.